We're now going to have uh, John Young uh, give a paper that's going to bookend, I think, beautifully with Garrick Small's contribution on Henry George. So let me tell you, for those who don't know, a little bit about John Young. John is an experienced author and lecturer in philosophy who taught for many years in Sydney, notably at the Centre for Thomistic Studies, so that's one lovely resonance. He now lives in Melbourne, where he's given courses at the Carolyn Chisholm Library. He's also contributed articles over many years to various international and national journals and newspapers. John is the author of several books on philosophy and related topics, including Reasoning Things Out, The Natural Economy, and The Scope of Possibility. John has spoken at previous Chesterton conferences here at Campion College. Today he'll be offering a short comment on Henry George as a clarification of his views on land ownership. So please join me as we welcome John. Thank you. I hope that this originally as an article uh, for the defendant that should be, appear there in the next issue. But seeing there's a time to fill in here, I've been asked to, to speak on this paper. Um, you know, one thing I've wondered about is why Hen um, Cheston didn't um, say more about Henry George. I don't know whether he said anything about him and why he didn't adopt uh, George's position. Now, I think a clue to this is a letter that appeared in GK's Weekly on April the 11th, 1925. And uh, the writer of the letter was a Georgist, and he wanted to know why, um, or rather he, um, he suggested uh, that uh, distributism should, uh, uh, should adopt Georgism. And the, the editorial response, I don't know who the editor was at the time, was, we do not agree with the nationalisation nationalization, nationalization of the land. In other words, it was taken for granted that George believed land should be nationalised, that it should be all, all owned by the government. Whereas, um, of course, um, Chesterton believed in um, land being privately owned. Now, this response revealed a tragic misunderstanding of Henry George's position. It's a misunderstanding which it led some Catholic social thinkers to dismiss George as a land socialist and therefore in conflict with Catholic social teaching because that teaching insists on the right to private property in land. And um, when uh, Leo XIII wrote uh, his, uh, uh, his encyclical Euro um, Navarum, um, he insists very strongly on private ownership of land. And it may be that that was uh, indirectly a criticism of Henry George. George is not mentioned in the encyclical, but so many Catholics have regarded him as a land socialist, and that's it. So he's written off. Uh, now, one thing, the reason why this is tragic is because George had much more to offer uh, um, in regard to the development of Catholic social teaching. So he saw econo uh, basic economic questions as fundamentally ethical questions and as part of the natural moral law. He has been called single tax George, but there's far more to his economic analysis than that. It deals with the relation of, between capital and labour, the question of free trade, the meaning of uh, economic value and much else. And Gary, I think, is very, very um, interesting paper has indicated that fact. Um, in Progress of Poverty, he has even, uh, even has a chapter on the immortality of the human soul, which with the purpose of life. And he has this um, that this life is not all; that the human soul is immortal. Um, he has four chapters refuting Malthus with his. Um, uh, theory of um, overpopulation. But did he believe in the nationalisation of land? He didn't. 
he expects, he puts his um, position in these words, we propose leaving land in the private possession of individuals with full liberty on their part to give, sell or bequeath it simply to levy on it for public purposes, public uses, a tax that shall equal the annual value of the land itself, irrespective of the use made of it or the improvements on it. That's in his little book, The Condition of Labour. Um, so in other words, the government will take a levy based on the unimproved value of land, as um, Garrick has pointed out very clearly. So if I own land worth, say, uh, $500,000 without improvements, the government would take an annual amount that would reduce the sale price to a much lower figure, maybe 30000 or something like that. Uh, the government there will, will be taking revenue arising from the natural advantages of the land, chiefly those due to the social amenities provided by society. This would be instead of taking, uh, of, instead of taxing labour and investment as at present. Uh, now, um, George's remedy, I maintain, is essential if distributism is to be fully implemented. Otherwise, we have the present situation where high land prices exclude so many people from land ownership or impose a burden of 30 years or more of tribute to the banks. So you finish up um, paying more in interest to the banks than the land itself. Which was, uh, George's position is not land socialism, but a, a, a way of ensuring the widespread private ownership of land. And the view that his remedy was land socialism arose partly because of his misleading terminology. He had a slogan which he kept repeating, land should not be private property, it should be common property. He even spoke of land nationalisation in a couple of places, when the context shows that he really meant the taking of land revenue by the government. And despite this misleading terminology, his proposal should be clear to anyone reading his works. And it is necessary that it be implemented if the major distortions arising from high land prices are to be overcome. It would need to be introduced gradually over many years. It would gradually repla replace other um, means of um, gaining revenue. No, I think uh, that anything else I've written here is covered by what I've been said uh, already. The big point I want to make is that um, Groch has been misunderstood and he believed uh, in private ownership of the land. It was only the um, unearned capital value that he thought should go to the people by way of, or instead of taxation. Uh, Thank you for that.